Okay, so we're going to talk about volumes by cross sections. First thing that I want you to, to realize is we're talking about something that has volume, so no longer an area. Last class we talked about an area. So essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to take some shape, let's say like a quadratic function, okay? And let's actually take a square root function, okay? And if I were to take this tiny little squiggle right here, and I wanted to project some shape up on top of this little area, if I had a lot of those shapes, what I would create is a 3D surface. Now, my drawing here kind of sucks, so let's go and talk about what am I saying. So I just drew the square root graph and the quadratic graph um, on my drawing back a minute ago. And so here I have a really nice actual GeoGebra visualization. And when I say this is the base of our solid, remember a solid, when we talk about 3D shapes, have a length, a width, and a height. Okay, so this is the base, okay, this tiny little petal shape. And what we're going to do is we're going to stick a square straight up and down projecting off of that base. Now, when we find areas, we're talking about an infinite number of rectangles, right? Well, in this case, I'm going to have an infinite number of squares. And when I get to an infinite number of squares, what I eventually get is this really cool 3D shape that has a flat bottom because that's the area that I projected it off. See, if I orient it this way, you can see my flat bottom and we don't see any of the squares. But if I turn it sideways and look at it as it slices, every slice is a square. Let me back up. Every slice is a square but there's an infinite number of slices that creates this really cool 3D shape, okay? Now, you can actually make a volume of a cross section with any shape. In fact, let's no longer do squares. What if I change this to triangles? So notice I go sideways. Oh, I spun it, sorry. If I go sideways and look at it, what I'm seeing Our triangles on its side okay and the more of them that I get I get this really cool 3d shape that has a point to it but again if I was to look at it from the top all I'm gonna see is that area uh, in between my quadratic and my square root function and we have an infinite number of those cool equilateral triangles and I could do the same thing and I could choose to do semicircles and remember that semicircle is projecting up and down. And if I were to look at it on its side, I would see infinite slices. If I were to take a paper thin slice of this solid, I'd get semicircles. And when I make an infinite number of semicircles, I have a flat bottom and a really cool 3D shape, okay? So I'm gonna show you just some more that you can kind of play with. Okay, so here's another really cool graph that has cross sections of equilateral triangles. Now it's really hard to kind of portray um, these slices sticking up off of the paper surface, but if you think about um, a solid kind of sticking up off of your paper, and that's exactly what's happening here. And there's some semicircles projecting up off of your paper. And here are some rectangles projecting up off of your paper. And remember, if you look at this from the top, you can't see them, but if you look at it from its side, like there's our paper, you can see the projection sticking up off of the page, okay? So now that I've kind of set this up, all right, you can kind of get a little more idea of where these pictures come from, and we're gonna be taking cross sections in two ways. We're going to be taking cross sections 
perpendicular to x and perpendicular to y. And the formula is different depending on which one you're doing. So really, 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 really uber important. If we're going to be perpendicular to x, okay, and when I say perpendicular to x, if we kind of go with our drawing that we had a minute ago, the slices are going to go up and down, okay? So that's going to be the area from A to B of area of x dx, okay? And if our cross sections are oriented perpendicular to y, what I mean by that is let's say I took the same region and instead my slices went left to right. If my slices go left to right, then it's the integral from C to D area of y dy. And what I want you to realize is that the integral of area is volume, okay? So by taking an integral of area, by accumulating all of the infinite areas of these rectangles, so area of one slice, and if I add up all the areas of those slices, I am going to get um, the volume of that surface, okay? So let's start with some steps. Um, these become really, really important. Step number one, you need to determine if you're going to use a dx or dy integral. And you'll know based on the problem setup. If it's a dx integral, remember that it's going to be perpendicular to x. If it's a dy integral, it's going to be perpendicular to y. And you'll know based on cross sections perpendicular to which axis. Okay? Step number two. Okay? You need to find your bounds of integration. And you can do so by finding intersections. Okay? Step number three. You need to find the area of one slice, whether that slice is a square or a rectangle or a semicircle. You're going to see lots of those. And typically what we're going to do is we're going to use the term S, and S will represent the edge of the shape that lies on the region, okay? Last but not least, number four, you're gonna set up your integral, an integral from something to something, area, uh, actually, let's write this as area of the slice, and it's gonna be D blank, either X or Y, okay? So, when we take a volume, we're adding up all of the little slices because if you go back to this visualization, okay, if I was able to find the area of just one semicircle, one semicircle, and then I found the area of the next semicircle, and the next semicircle, and if I was able to find all of those semicircles, Considering there's an infinite amount of semicircles, I would be able to take all of those areas and add them up and get the volume of this object. And an integral will accumulate those areas for us. Okay? So, let's dive into an example. And what I'll tell you is, I actually have an open mind and know that we will get to talk about these when I get back. Okay? So, it says, set up the integrals needed to find the volume of a solid whose base is the area bounded by y equals x squared and y equals negative 2x plus 3. So let's just start by making those graphs. So y equals x squared, 
I'm not going to do a super perfect parabola here, okay? And we've also got negative 2x plus 3. And guys, I'm just going to kind of estimate this just for the purposes of our picture. You know what a negative slope looks like. I do need to find these intersections. So let's set them equal to each other so we know that our bounds of integration because we're really talking about setting up a shape in this area. That's gonna be the base of our solid, okay? So we've got x squared plus two x minus three equals zero, which will factor into x plus three and x minus one to give us intersections at negative three and one. So that's one and that's negative three, okay? Which I guess you don't need these dotted lines. But, okay, so all of these cross sections, notice in the problem it says we're going to set up these cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis. Now what that means is that all of these cross sections are going to be oriented up and down, okay, perpendicular to x, okay? So our first cross section is going to be a rectangle of height Four. So in your brain, I want you to kind of visualize that here's my region, okay? And here is my tiny slice. There's going to be a rectangle sticking up off of the page. That's a terrible job. I can do better. Okay, and we're going to have lots of these rectangles sticking up off of the page. Okay, and keep in mind I can't draw them and make them perfectly, but what you need to kind of get out of this is that this piece right here is one edge of the rectangle, that tiny little thing right there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to call this s meaning the edge of the rectangle now if we look at it sideways this is s and this is a height of four so these guys are all sticking up four up off of our paper okay now keep in mind that slice is super 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 thin an infinitesimally thin slice okay so what we need to do is we need to find a formula for s s any point along this will be represented by the height of our function. So in this case, s is going to be our top function minus our bottom function. So the top function happens to be the line, negative 2x plus 3. And our bottom function is the parabola, x squared. And no matter where I make this slice at, no matter what, it will always have a side that will be a distance of negative 2x plus 3 minus x squared. So that is my side, okay? The next thing you want to do is, what is the area formula for a rectangle, okay? Well, the area formula for a rectangle is length times width, right? So in this case, it's s times 4 and we're gonna substitute in the s that we just wrote as negative 2x plus 3 minus x squared times 4. So our last step is to write our volume. And what I'm really looking for is I wanna see a picture, I wanna see a statement for s, I wanna see you find area, and then we're gonna write that volume integral. So our volume is going to be the integral from A to B of the area of that slice. And it's going to be dx because we're going perpendicular to x. Okay, So our integral will go from negative 3 to 1. And my area of the slice we already found right here is going to be 4 
times negative 2x plus 3 minus x squared dx. And yes, you can take the 4 to the outside. Um, press pause, go to math 9 on your calculator, and tell me what you get. If you're coming back, you should have gotten 128 over 3, and I'm going to say units cubed because it is a volume, okay? Now, what if I change this, and instead of doing rectangles, what if I'm going to have semicircles kind of sticking up off of this page? So now, this is going to be really hard to draw. I have a semicircle kind of projecting up off of the page, okay? Now, we're still going to have the bases oriented perpendicular to the x-axis. So let's look at this sideways. This would be S. And when I say S, I'm talking about this edge up and down that we just found. Now, guys, our S has not changed at all. Our S is still represented by top minus bottom, so negative 2x plus 3 minus x squared. Still hasn't changed, okay? Now we need a formula for area. Area of a semicircle is pi halves r squared, okay? But notice I don't have r, I have s. Well, guys, you need to look at your picture and realize that r happens to be half of s. So that means that I can rewrite this formula to be pi halves s over 2 squared, which I can simplify to be pi halves s squared over 4 or pi 8 s squared. You want to talk about a place to potentially make a mistake? That's it right there, not realizing that the radius happens to be s over 2. Well, the last thing we're going to do with this area formula is substitute in the s equation, negative 2x plus 3 minus x squared, and I now have my equation. So I've got area of a slice. We're going to write our volume. Volume is going to be the integral from negative 3 to 1 of my area equation. Pi 8, negative 2x plus 3 minus x squared dx. Always the area of that slice will go right there. Okay, And if I plug that into my calculator, I'll let you use Math 9 for this one. Um, you should get about 13.404 units cubed. But do not trust my word on it. You need to actually go and check that. Okay. Now, a really cool example. Um, I like this example too. Um, we're still going to be working with perpendicular to x-axis. But this time, we're going to set up our base as a circle. So x squared plus y squared equals 9. So it's going to have a radius of 3 in every direction. And then we're going to set up those perpendicular to x, and guys, it does not matter where you draw that. I mean, you can draw it over here, you can draw it over here. So as long as you realize that those are going to be the edges, s, of your shape, and this time we're going to do equilateral triangles. So in your head, you're imagining these triangles kind of projecting up off of the page here, okay? Now, if I orient these sideways, this is S, and there's my triangle kind of sticking up off of the page, and because these are equilateral, this is S, and this is S, and this is S, because all the sides are the same, okay? Important for you to note that the area of an equilateral triangle is this formula. You have to have that memorized. Um, I'm not going to go through the proof of that, but that is the formula for the area of an equilateral triangle. If you use your special right triangles, you can certainly figure that out, okay? So, we're going to set up a dx integral because it's perpendicular to x. 
And I need to realize that this equation here isn't solved for y. So y squared is equal to 9 minus x squared, which means that y is the square root of 9 minus x squared. And guys, what that means is, is that the top half of my circle is positive root 9 minus x squared, and the bottom half of my circle is negative 9 minus x squared. So it has a plus or minus. So why is that important? Because if I want to find the distance s, s is going to be top minus bottom. And the top half of the semicircle is root 9 minus x squared. And the bottom half of the semicircle is negative root 9 minus x squared, which is going to make this edge 2 root 9 minus x squared, okay? So I've figured out what s is. Now I need to figure out what my area formula is. So area is s squared times root 3 over 4. If I substitute in my expression for s, I have 2 root 9 minus x squared all squared times root 3 over 4. Now I always write my area formula out separately so that I can go to my volume formula. <laughs> Leo, my integral is going to go from negative 3 to 3. I'm sorry if y'all can hear my dog in the background. So I'm going to go from negative 3 to 3. And I'm going to take my area formula, and that's going to go in right there. So root 3 over 4. Um, I know I could simplify this and say 2 squared is 4. And if you square this, those are going to cancel out. So 9 minus x squared dx. And technically those fours will cancel. But anyways, you're going to put it in your graphing calculator. Don't trust my word on it. Put it in your graphing calculator. Use Math 9. Tell me what you get. Um, if you're checking your work, you should get about 62.354 units cubed. Now, all three examples that I've just done have been easy because they've all been oriented perpendicular to x, perpendicular to x, perpendicular to x, perpendicular to x. The one that I think that is probably the most discomfort, discomforting is going perpendicular to y because you're going to have to do a dy integral. So let's do this one, be the last one we do. It says bounded by y equals x squared. Okay, y equals zero, which is the horizontal line, and x equals two. So x equals two, the vertical line. And so the area that is gonna be our base of the solid will be that guy right there, okay? Now we're gonna orient these perpendicular to y, so that is going to be my S. And what we're going to do is we're going to have squares projecting up off of the page where this is an S and a square that is an S. Okay. Now the tricky part about this is because this is a dy integral, that means all of this is going to have to be in terms of y, everything. So we're going to take our y equals x squared and rewrite it as x equals root y, okay? And this is already x equals 2, so that's fine because it's already solved for x. And so what we need to do is figure out where we're going to set up our integral from. Remember that our integral will be y values. So we need to go from our bottom y value, which is clearly zero, and our top y value has to be this point right here. Well, if we think about it like this, if I plug in two into my function, this is clearly the point two, four, okay? So what is S? S is this distance everywhere on the function and so, not top minus bottom, but right minus left. 
So our rightmost function is 2. Minus left is our parabola, which we're going to write as square root of y. So s is represented by 2 minus root y. And you all know that the area of a square will be s squared, side squared. So if I plug in my s, I get 2 minus root y squared. So for my volume equation, remember that we're doing bounds of y. We're going from 0 to 4, and it might be helpful for you to say y values here of the area of a slice, 2 minus root y squared dy. Plug it into your calculator. Uh, I've got mine in fraction form already. Should get about 8 thirds units cubed. Guys, you're going to get a ton more practice with this, but the biggest, biggest, biggest takeaway is that if you want to find the volume of a cross section, it is always going to be an integral of the area of a slice, dx or dy. Always, always, always. Okay? So visualizing, I think, these is one of the most difficult parts. Um, you'll get a lot of practice. I get to talk to you about these when I come back. So um, 